Driver Marcus Armstrong is taking the time to join us right now. Thanks a lot for coming in this morning. Thank you very much for having me. So I, for the first time in 32 years, the course is now in downtown Detroit. Now, I know you haven't driven in Detroit before, but it's a street course. And as a driver, uh, do you prefer a street course to an oval? To kind of tell us the differences. Uh, well, everyone has their preferences. Me personally, I've always enjoyed street circuits because they're so immensely challenging. Like, you can imagine when you're driving at 200, up to 200 miles an hour, um, how close the walls feel, and then obviously how hard they are when you hit them. So, uh, driving to the limits and risking it all on a street circuit is one of the most rewarding things about being a racing driver. And I think this circuit in particular is is extremely challenging. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great weekend. You know, this is your first season in uh, IndyCar. So, how's it going? It's going well. Uh, yes, like, like you said, first season IndyCar. Uh, previously, I was in Europe doing Formula 2 and, and bits and pieces over there. So, uh, I feel like this is a completely different championship. It's a proper animal. The car is an animal. Like, you really have to drive the wheels off it, you know, <laughs> grab it. <laughs> by the scruff of the neck, yeah. uh, which is awesome. Like as a driver, that's what you want to do is you want to have a tire that is robust and you can slide a lot, uh, has a lot of horsepower obviously, and the downforce is, is very high as well. So um, for me as a driver, it's like, so satisfying to drive an IndyCar. I bet. A robust tire. That's how I describe all my tires on my sedan. Very robust. <laughs> now, uh, you are actually teammates with Scott Dixon, your boyhood idol. You're both from New Zealand. Tell us how awesome that is for you. Yes. Uh, Scott, well, his face is plastered all over the club rooms of every go-kart track in New Zealand. So naturally, when I was growing up, he was the guy to look up to. And he was also winning continuously. Um, when I was five years old to, to now, basically, he hasn't stopped winning. So now to work with him personally, it's very special. And when I, when I finally got the confirmation that I was going to be driving for Chip Ganassi Racing uh, last year, that was one of the first things that was sort of like, you know, went in my mind was like, oh, I'm actually going to be teammates with this guy now. So, um, but it's so cool just to learn from him. He's been extremely open with me. Um, and it's, it's also a familiar accent, so it's cool. Yeah, a little, little uh, piece of home there. Now, actually, talk about when you left home in New Zealand. You left at 14. Now, how much convincing did that take, you know, your, to let your father let you go to Italy at 14? I was actually 13. Oh, 13. Um, All right. So that, I don't know if that's better or worse, but no, it, it took a while. And trust me, like, I knew what I wanted. Um, he didn't want me to do motorsport f at the beginning, you know, because it's quite dangerous. Um, but... I said to him, okay, I'll go for the first two weeks. I've had this amazing offer from a great team in Europe. I'll go for the first two, two races and we'll see how it goes. And then just, uh, yeah, I'll come back to New Zealand after that. Uh, and obviously the minute I got on that plane, I knew I was never coming back. And uh, fast forward, I don't know, 10 years, I'm here racing IndyCar. Yeah, well, you've had quite the journey. Now, I, I'm just curious about uh, getting back to the Detroit Grand Prix and the course, which you've never driven. How do you prepare for something like that going into the weekend? Is there a lot of simulator work, or what do you do? Yes, a lot of simulator work. Um, we do a lot of preparation at the factory before we arrive to the city that we're racing at. So this weekend, it's a little bit different because it's a new track. Um, all we can do is laser scan the circuit and then try and understand how the circuit's going to be in terms of ride, whether or not it's going to be extremely bumpy, how the tarmac will be. Even the weather and the wind, uh, we, we take that into account. And the engineers are very, very specific. Like, these cars are so sensitive to everything that you change. Even if, for example, you change the, the ambient temperatures by five degrees, it's going to change the philosophy of your race car. So, uh, and, and the sense of how you set it up. So. We have to be on top of that, and um, I feel like we've done a good job so far. And I have to ask about the dual pit, because this is a feature everyone's been talking about. As a driver, does that mean a lot to you? Will you be able to make quicker pit stops with more spaces available, or what's that actually mean? That's a really good question. I don't think I've ever seen a dual pit, pit lane in my life in motorsport. So this is going to be... I, honestly, I don't know what to expect. I think you're going to be the first to see it, but man, it's going to be chaos because there's obviously two lines. We merge into one and it's almost like a bit of a funnel, you know, like it's quite, quite a thin pit exit and there's 27 cars, if there's a yellow coming out at the same time, it's going to get pretty dicey. So 
you hold on to your hats. It will be fun to watch. <laughs> Marcus, so glad you're in the uh, IndyCar series. I'm so glad you're here racing at Detroit. It's going to be a fun uh, Sunday afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming in. And if you are still looking for tickets, head to DetroitGP.com.